Hello everyone, today I'm going to look at Unconditional Surrender. It's a strategic World War II European game by GMT, uh, designed by Salvatore Vasta and published in 2014. Front of the box, we've got a photo, uh, quite a famous photo from World War II, uh, in grayscale, obviously. Uh, back's a little bit more colourful, picture of the map, which comes on two sheets. Uh, description of the contents, obviously, as usual. Complexity is rated as 5 out of 9, which I think is probably a little low. I think it probably is closer to a 7 or even an 8. It's not a simple game. Uh, solitaire suitability 7 seems completely reasonable. There's no specific solitaire system in there, but uh, nothing either that would make it difficult to play solitaire. So, let's have a look what's in the box. Okay, first of all, we've got the rule book. 48 pages uh, in colour. Okay, rules for movement, combat, supply, uh, the economy, politics, and the diplomatic system, weather. Okay, nicely uh, highlighted throughout with important information, colour coded, quite a lot of text, but nice, fairly large font and quite easy to read. Uh, the system itself is quite interesting. If you're used to playing other World War II strategic games, you may find this uh, quite a bit different. Let's have a look at the sheets. Okay, first of all, three the first three player age sheets, one for each player, because this can be a one, two, or three player game. So let's look at one of them. Sequence of play up here. Weather. There's four different weather zones on the map. Ranges, so how far your airstrikes can go, uh, how far naval interception can be. Supply sources, so you can have limited or unlimited supply, or out of supply. Then you've got the combat results table. Now, one of the nice, very interesting things about this system is, first of all, there's no ground stacking. So, one unit per hex. I really appreciate that. I'm not very good at picking up stacks of counters. I seem to have fiddly fingers, so uh, that seems to work really well for me. Uh, and the combat results table... Uh, works by rolling a die and adding die roll modifiers. So for instance, if it's a ground combat uh, and you're in low supply, you're going to get a minus two on your die roll. The attacker rolls, the defender rolls, and sees the effect on the other uh, units. Okay. Now the same combat table and the same system is used for strategic combat, for air and naval combat, and ground combat. So it's quite simple. Roll a die, see what you get. Okay. Uh, seems like a very interesting system. On the back you've got production, some conditional events, certain things obviously happen when other things happen and they're highlighted there, what the movement is and the effect on national will. National will is how you force another country to surrender. Okay, so it seems very interesting. Now one of the nice things I like about production is lots of games have got production. You know, you get your burps or whatever and you can make a ground unit or you can make an aircraft carrier this one you actually have to use your production points for activating units so if you've got a poor economy your units aren't going to be doing very much that seems like a very good system to me simplifies the fact that you can't generally do everything you want all the time uh, as the Germans you know start to suffer in World War II they're going to be falling back they're not going to be able to do all those mass attacks that they could do in 1941 into Russia so that seems very interesting also, you get three of these sequence of play flow charts. Again, one for each player. Uh, just look at one of them. Full sequence of play, weather phase, declaring war, the economy, strategic war, strategic movement, then operations. Now, the way the game works is, unlike a lot of games, you don't move all your units, then attack. You activate units individually. So you've got a ground unit, you pick it up, you decide where it's going to move to, and then while it's moving, it can attack. So there's two different types of combat for ground units. You can either do a mobile combat, where you can keep moving afterwards, or you do an assault, where you stop and other units adjacent to you will help you. Very interesting. Uh, I remember, remember an old game called Next War that used a system of activating units one at a time, and it sort of reminds me of that. Also in here you've got tracks for, different, uh, for the different factions. So just looking at the front of these... You've got the Axis Faction card, Soviet Faction card, and Western Faction card. These, where you put your units when they're eliminated or are being mobilised, track your national will, track how many factories you've got, and track how much production you've got. Now, if you don't want to use the three separate sheets, you can cut that down to two. That one's not required. And track everything on these two sheets. Okay, seems like a, a nice way. If you're a bit short of space, you can 
uh, compact everything by using those. Okay, now let's look at the units. There's three counter sheets, I think 840 counters in total. Uh, fairly small counters, but uh, they shouldn't be too difficult to pick up. There's no combat factors. It's quite interesting. Uh, all the units are basically a unit. Okay, you've got ground units, you've got mechanised or tank units, you've got aircraft, uh, you've obviously got sea units, you've got forts, you've got the Russians, the Germans, that's all the Germans. Okay? You don't look like you've got very much, do you? French, Americans, Brits. Okay. Second counter sheet, you've got some of the miners over here. Uh, you've got the Italians, you've got control markers. Uh, again, more uh, Russian and uh, Western Allied units. And yet again, more control markers. Now, one of the systems it uses is sorties. Aircraft can do six sorties. Uh, every time they do an activity, they gain a sortie. You can only recover two a turn, though. So once you've got up to your maximum six, you might have a unit that's not going to be very effective for the rest of the game. So you can push your aircraft as much as you want, but if you do, you realise that later turns you're going to be punished. You've got the Hungarians, uh, the Belgians, the Greeks, etc. on that one. Nice, colourful counters. Nicely done. There were some... Uh, counter sheets off cut I know that so just check yours if you get a copy but uh, GMT are very good at this kind of thing and will always replace stuff all the counters are obviously double sided now let's look at the maps now there's fairly small hexes on the map but bearing in mind that you've only got a single ground unit in each one stacking isn't ever going to be very high this is the eastern map so you've got Union of Soviet Socialist Republics you've got Turkey You've got the Balkans, Greece, North Africa, Syria, etc. Okay. And the second map is obviously the western one. This covers the rest of North Africa. And you've got massive turn track up there. It actually takes up quite a lot of space, quite surprisingly. Uh, Scandinavia, Western Europe, Germany, Britain, Spain, Italy. Okay. So you can set the whole thing up on two, uh, two map sheets so it doesn't occupy too much space. Finally, you've got this playbook. This is actually even longer than the rules. There's 52 pages. However, it contains lots of information, notes. The first thing it contains, which is quite interesting, is how to learn the rules. Now, it gives you various different methods for using them. You can do uh, sequence of play method or you can do the training scenarios method, which is probably recommended. There are 13 scenarios, I believe, in the game. Uh, several two-player ones, ranging from Poland 39 up to Soviets versus Westerns in 45-46, if you want to do an you know, alternate historical one. And then you've got three-player ones. So you've got Europe 1939 onwards, 41 onwards, 42, etc. Or Germany 45. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what's inside the box. Uh, looks like a very interesting game and a very interesting system. I'm looking forward to playing this as soon as possible. Uh, I was always a big fan of a Totala Krieg, that was probably one of my favourite World War II strategy game. Salvatore Vasta was heavily involved with that. So I'm looking forward to a replacement that's got a modern system, very interesting to play, and a, a hopefully quite a lot of fun as well. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what's in the box. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.